Hello everyone, this is Thoughtful Salt, and today we are going over the L96 Sniper Rifle. Available only to the Recon class, the L96 is a bolt-action rifle unlocked after completing the Creeping Death assignment that comes with the Back to Kirkland expansion. The L96 comes with two weapon camos for premium members, the Airman camo and the Digital Woodland camo, which is unlocked by completing the L96 Specialist Challenge, which involves getting 100 kills with the L96, 50 spot assists with the MAV, and one headshot at at least 350 meters with the rifle. The L96 comes with 10 rounds in the magazine, plus one in the chamber, and it fires at a rate of 43.5 rounds per minute. It reloads in 2.6 seconds with a bullet left in the magazine, and 4.8 seconds if you fired all of the rounds. It deals 80 damage up to 15 meters, and drops from there to 59 and 100 meters. With its chest multiplier of 1.25, it will kill in one shot to the chest within 15 meters, and will kill in one shot to the head at any range. Its bullet velocity is 540 meters a second, which gives this gun reliable performance at longer ranges as you will have to compensate less for bullet drop when you aim at your target. The L96 is a weapon that demands precision to use successfully, and the weapon's bolt action nature means that at close range you will be vulnerable if you miss the first shot or are caught unawares. This means that it is considerably less forgiving than a semi-auto or assault rifle at range when you botch the first shot as the cycle of the bolt can give your target time to run away or engage you successfully. Aim for the head and this weapon will be your friend. For attachments, you have a wide variety of scopes and sights in the first slot. The iron sights on this weapon prove to be usable at medium range, but the wide tip can obstruct your target at longer ranges. There are better options available for this weapon. One of those options is the 8x scope, which provides a great mix of long range precision and medium range capabilities. Your peripheral vision isn't hampered too much, and acquiring your targets is made easy by the lack of visual clutter. It's a simplistic sight, but one that does the job so well that it is by far the best scope for this rifle. On the other hand, the Ballistic 12 time scope offers extreme precision for long-range encounters, but its narrow cone of vision severely limits your close-range abilities. If you don't have your target within the center of your screen by the time you zoom in, it can be extremely hard to locate your target because of the disorientation that may ensue. But its range capabilities are unparalleled. Its range finders are clear and allow for accurate estimates of bullet drop with this weapon. However, I would only recommend it for maps where longer sight lines are plentiful. Otherwise, stick with the 8x scope. The ACOG 4x scope is a bit clumsy to use, but it does give a modicum of precision to the user. It's mediocre, however. Don't use it. The holographic and reflex sight variants for the US and Russian forces are usable, but their limited sight picture may impair your long-range abilities. The holographic variants in particular aren't very useful on precision weapons, as the circle provides next to no benefit in bullet spread prediction, and it may block your target at the L96's effective ranges. The reflex and cobra sights are more useful, but once again, these sights are only effective at close to medium range, while longer range targets will often survive the lack of precision these sights entail. This lack of precision, coupled with the unforgiving nature of bolt-action weapons, means that you should not encourage bad habits by using these sights. The IRNV one-time scope is terrible. Don't use it. Any benefits you might gain from easier target acquisition at close ranges are offset by the lack of definition and disappearance of your long-range capabilities. Not to mention the fact that the L96 cannot compete at the close ranges of assault and engineer weapons that the sight will limit you to. Avoid it at all costs. The 
The M145 3.4x scope is actually a pretty good sight. It provides a good deal of precision for its effective range, and it does not hamper your close range abilities as much as the ACOG scope. All in all, it is a very good choice for this weapon. The PSO-1 4 scope, on the other hand, proves to be a less than optimal sight. Its bulkier housing and visual clutter can limit both your precision and peripheral vision. It is usable, but not recommended for a serious setup. The PKS-07 7 scope suffers from some of the same problems though they are less of an issue here because of the enhanced zoom and the deliberate choice of limiting your close range performance anyways by using a longer range scope. It is usable, but I wouldn't recommend it. The PKA 3.4 time scope proves to be a surprisingly usable scope, though it does lack pinpoint precision at the longer ranges. Its relatively clear sight picture and generous zoom means that it is a capable medium long range scope, though don't expect to get too many headshots at the tail end of its effective range. In the second slot, you have two choices for this weapon. The bipod is a good attachment if you are confident that you will never miss your first shot. Otherwise, you will have to live with the possibility that your targets will get away due to the fact that you have to zoom out to cycle the bolt on your rifle and zoom back in to reacquire your target. The benefit of reduced scope sway is outweighed by the reduced mobility while the bipod is deployed, and the increase in difficulty of long range engagements caused by the zoom out means that I cannot recommend this attachment. The straight pull bolt then is the clear favor. It does come with a bit of artificial recoil as the bolt is pulled, but you will retain your view on target and be able to deliver a follow-up shot quicker. For any engagement, being able to stay on target is paramount, and the straight pull bolt is the best attachment for the second slot. For the third slot, you have one good choice and two awful ones. The laser sight is one of those attachments where it is better to have it and not need it than not have it at all. While it is not wise to rely on the hipfire of a bolt action rifle, in a pinch, the laser sight can pull off goofy shots like this. The tactical light is all but useless on this weapon, as it provides more benefits for weapons that can deliver more than one shot a second. As such, if you must use it due to some pact with the devil, use it with the M1911 tactical as a sidearm for continuation's sake. The suppressor is another bad choice. The ability to stay off radar in close medium range engagements is great, but the severe bullet drop at longer ranges and crappy bolt action performance at close ranges anyways makes this a bad choice for the gun. For your sidearm, I would recommend the awesome stopping power of the MP412 Rex or the 44 Magnum. Although the Rex's superior fire rate means that you can defend yourself more effectively without giving the enemy time to retaliate as they could with the 44 Magnum. All the other pistols will serve adequately, but for sheer reliability, go with the revolvers. The L96 is a high risk, high reward weapon and is one of the more demanding weapons to use in the game, as with all bolt action rifles. As such, aim for the head, and switch to your pistol for close quarters gunfights. You are still limited at close to medium ranges against assault rifles and carbines, but if you practice a bit of cautious judgement with picking your battles, you can be competitive in nearly all game types with the L96. Never be afraid to run if you are outmatched, whether it be by hordes of enemy infantry or a main battle tank. Always strive for the tactical advantage your precision rifle can bring to bear. One shot, one kill.
Thanks for watching. This is Thoughtful Salt, signing out.